Hello, everybody. Welcome back to E20 Zone TV Premier League review. And I am joined by Tony from Early Doors Football TV. And we're here to talk about West Ham United, the season that's just been, David Moyes, Julian Lopetegui, and the best and worst moments this season. <laughs> Tone, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm very good. And uh, thanks for the invite for this as well. Appreciate that. But um, I suppose, I don't know if it's the same as you, mate. Thanks. I ain't going to swear that the season's <laughs> over and done with. You know what I mean? Uh, I Listen, I agree, mate. That's one thing I will do before we get started. I am glad the season's done, dusted, finished, because it was like a drain on our, on, on our souls. Like, you're, you're arguing with people consistently. And do you know what? It's just, it, it takes the fun out of the of the enjoyment of the game. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And that, that to me, is what it's all about. West Ham fans shouldn't be fighting and round with each other consistently. It was like, it was like being in a marriage that you just, don't like but you just you're just <laughs> suffering it for the sake of the kids you know what I'm it's just is what it is so you know but yeah this let's get into this premier league 2023 24 time this is your time tell me how did it go for you this year i mean you know talk about a roller coaster the ups and downs we had more downs than we had ups mm. uh the start of the season okay you know opening game we drew one all didn't we at bournemouth and uh I don't know. For me, it felt like, uh, is that the you know, is this the way the season is going to go for us? So, you know, yeah. was, you know, that, that game especially, so considering um, how we give that goal away as well for the, the you know for the, their equaliser. But as the you know the, the season went on, started to see some improvement, and obviously the new signings coming in, he looked promising, and I think that was the encouraging thing for me, James, was when you saw Steadtine on that on that Learjet, yeah. you know, he's bringing back someone, and it, and that was kind of refreshing because how often do we see that for West Ham? Very rare. Like, you I know. mean, like, it's always, uh, one thing I will say is that at the start of the season, and this is what's got to change in the new season coming up, is basically, I need to see people in the door a pre-season at this club. Like, there was no one in the door come that first game against Bournemouth, yeah. which was shocking, really. Yeah. If I'm honest. Yeah. It, it, it was, it were, it, you know, you're right, the, the signings were a long time coming in that, and I think that's the thing that kind of also made it hard for us as well because you've seen other clubs doing business and yeah what's, what's going on with us we were in all this talk linked with this person linked with that person but no no progress would you say was... you know, Tom, would you say that Declan Rice situation sort of hindered us in the transfer market because that sort of dragged on for the whole of the summer yeah I agree on that you know yeah. it was a case of like I suppose the, what was promising about I say promising, what was good about that it was it wasn't three or four or five people coming in from it. It was literally centered around two clubs. Well, mm. City came in late, didn't they? But it was literally two clubs. Um, so I agree. Yeah, it did hinder the things because you could tell that Sullivan was playing hard ball and yeah. fair play to him in that respect. Because I've alluded to this before, how many times we've we been shafted with the players that we've actually produced. Uh, so actually, to get top dollar for a player. Um, I commend him for that, but yeah, it did hold us back, and mm. um, you can see where we struggled on it. And in certain respects, okay, didn't want to see the player go, but great business for West Ham, and mm. we actually kind of we used that money wisely, which was was you know the promising thing. Rather than bringing in dross, we actually brought in a bit of quality for a change. I agree with you on that because I remember in twenty sixteen when we obviously left uh, the bowling. Went to Stratford. We brought in so many players, and none of them were, were any good, really, no. to a point. And it was just like you, it was the numbers game rather than the quality game. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been a ninth place finish. Tone, is that a good season for West Ham, or is this a season that as it it it's ninth, but it, it shouldn't be ninth. We should be a lot lower than where we've landed. I think ninth. You could say. Is respectable in certain respects um the fact that at one point was bloody it was fifth yeah, well. and that was deserved fifth as well considering you know you look at this 2024 how badly that went for us i mean four wins in 2024 that just sums up our season uh but yeah to finish ninth it's quite respectable fun enough the show i did last night someone actually put a question to us is ninth a um does it show that the premier league is too competitive or less competitive 
for me, it's a case of it's still competitive. But I thought, I, yeah, you can blame, and I know we're going to talk about Moyes shortly. I think that in the Moyes situation with some of the games and the tactics he played, that, that cost us. And yeah. I worked injuries were at fault for that. It was more down to you know man manage, uh, game management at that stage that really cost mm. them games. Uh, for me, it's like it's mixed with me because I think ninth is a good position for West Ham to be in. Like West Ham have only ever been in the top ten 21 times in their history. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's not like West Ham are this big powerhouse club that are consistently in the top ten. I think it does paper over a bit of cracks though. Like there's been games this season that I think we, we me and you would both agree have been borderline shocking, and we've oh, managed to right. spin them around and and get the result or get the draw when we've looked destined to be like getting hammered or losing like really badly. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, um, I agree, I agree, but I do think ninth is where West Ham are at. I don't think we're that top six side, and we're definitely not a mid table outfit. So I think roughly between seventh. And 10th, I think, is where West Ham should be. I think that's the yeah. progression of the club. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, so it's a fair comment. I mean, when you look at it, it's an improvement from last season in that respect. It is, yeah. yeah. And, it uh, really is. We've got, we've got to take that. But, yeah, I think um, the one game that stands out for me, and I, did, I remember doing a watch-along for it, and then I regretted it, I must admit, was when we played Brighton at home. Yeah. And if we weren't for, we weren't for Areola, uh, we should have been smashed 3-4-0 in that game. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what's long this year in the FA Cup, Bristol City away, and uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I was completely, I was completely demonetized that night. But yeah, it, was, it, was, it is what it is. It is what it is. But that's been times Premier League 20, 23, 24. Let's go to your best and worst moments. Start off with your worst moment, Tone. What's your sort um, of worst moment this season? I suppose the worst moment is more down to um, the club itself. Yeah. You know, we've, and we know it's obviously down to the manager in, in that respect, but we're famed for our academy and we hardly used anything. And he, he stuck with certain players for a bit too long. You know, I mean, for instance, the, the, frustrating for must be for Mabamba because you sit on that bench and you're just watching games. And didn't get up, you know, when you've got Antonio injured at the time, you know, okay, we've got Piquet you know, and Kudos and we've got Bowen, etc. Give mm. the kid a chance. He was doing all right in the friendlies, so just blood him in. We saw other teams do it. They weren't afraid to play youth, youth teams, uh, you know, reserve team players, whatever we want to call them, academy players. But more is, I don't know, he just kind of held back on that. The only kind of saving grace from that is George Urfi. I agree slightly but i do look at it is is the vine really the man that we should be relying on you know what i mean no and no and that's where it goes back to recruitment for me i think when we are, when you're relying on an 18 year old kid to come in and try and score the goal for west ham united it's it, it's quite frightening really like we're we're not seeing who the replacement is for antonio it's like antonio's here but we're like oh we'll give him another year another year and we just don't know whether he's gonna who's gonna come in so yep. Well, I think I we already know. talked about this before, weren't we? You know, you say or share transfer business was shocking because the January yeah. window, especially, is the one that really summed it all up. We get rid of two two left wingers, no replacement. As you said, we didn't get any kind of. We're not even considered. Well, you heard all the talks of getting a forward to replace Antonio. Never yeah. happened. Ibrahim, you know, we're going to get him. Oh well, there's, there's this is probably in the way in that you hear old Sullivan's bum cheeks going from that stage, yeah. And uh, we thought, right? it was, the, the, and then Brighton signs him, and it's like, come on, it why, is. Why can't we get over the line? I I agree with you on that. I really do. I think the transfer window is a major flaw in our in our sort of development. Like I think when you are in Europe like we was and we're competing on all four competitions throughout a season and your owner sits there and does nothing and not only doesn't do anything or any note tone but he sits there and sort of gives you a cock and ball story <laughs> and people believe it and then like blame the manager for that now listen david moyes we will get on to in a minute but for me when i look at it i look at this and think you need to take the reins here and say right if this, that's the man that the manager and the, and the staff and style and everyone believes in, you should go for him. Um, 
I do agree with you on that, though. I think that's one of the worst things this season. I think there's been other times this year where I've looked at it and gone, some things are just not right in house. Mm. Like, I don't, I think, as I've always said on this channel, you can take Moyes out, but the structure at West Ham needs to really be severely looked at. Do you know what I'm saying? Brilliant, mate. Brilliant, um, mate. What's the best moment for you this year, Tone? Uh, best moments, I think, if you look at it, it's, it's, you know, on the reverse, the flip side, obviously, is the signings, you know, kudos. Yeah. I mean, it's what a buy. Yeah. You know, considering all the clubs that was linked with this player and he wants to come to Little West Ham, you know, it, it's how many times we can turn and say, hey, we've got a player that actually wants to play for us for a change, you know, getting in, oh, wait, Wall Prowse. Yeah, you could say he started off all right, five minute wonder, died off a little bit. Alvarez, another great signing. You know, and obviously Paquetta, again, who's kind of faded off from there. I mean, I've apparently seen saying again today that he's apparently uh, agreed terms with City now, but how true that is is another thing. Mm. So, and also, I think if you look at it, as you said, Steadtine as well, getting him in, that's got to be a great bit of business for us. Because obviously, mm. you, it comes down to the you, you got someone that has got a bit of knowledge about European players that are, are you know can do the business, and I think that's the good thing because you know full well you can see players from Europe, but are they proven to come into the Premier League and hit the road running and start off straight mm. away? And we've seen with certain clubs they've do, don't bought players like that, and they've fallen by the wayside, like you said. When you look at like the Andersons and, and stuff like that we bought previously, yeah, it's their time that you've got someone who's got his head screwed on. I think the only kind of stumbling block in that, which comes back onto the worst moments, is with Sullivan, Sullivan kind of pulling them strings. How long we keep hold of this man to do the business because of these these kind of shenanigans is said to be you know said to be seen. That is that's the only concern with me. I think I'm not really worried about Stiden sort of sort of job because he knows what he's doing. I'm more worried about Sullivan spoiling his job mm. if that, if, to yeah. a point. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And that is the fear with me. It's like I look at him and I think, right, you leave him in charge, he will go out and find you talent. That's what he does. He's done it at Leverkusen and he's going to yeah. try and do it here. Uh, I, think the, I think the players, I agree with you on this, uh, the best players, uh, best moments are some of these players that have arrived. Now, I'm going to ask you something, Tone, right? I want you to give me a Ratings out of 10 for all four signings that we have signed, sort of, who have been major players this year. Obviously, Ward Prowse, uh, Alvarez, Kudus, and obviously Mavropanos. Um, start off with James Ward Prowse. What do you give him out of 10 times for this season for you? Um, I'll, I'll give him a steady seven, I'd say. You know, I wouldn't give him anything higher than that. Mm. He started, like I said, he, he came in, and you can see why we bought him, you know, the free kicks and obviously the corners, etc. But he kind of dropped off the, you know, his form dropped a little bit and I wouldn't say he's actually recovered from it. So I don't know what's going on there. So yeah, yeah. steady seven for it for Prowse. What about Mavropanos? Mavropanos? Um, I like him. I think if you look at it, he's one that we want to get someone to work with him. Right. You know, you can see he's got, a, he's got a bit of a style about himself. He's not afraid to get into the, you know, put his head into the box when we've got a corner. Yeah. Um, so I'll give him an eight, actually, because I think there's a player that's bursting to come out still. I think we can improve that play even more. Mm. Uh, do you know what? With Mavropanos, it's like that with me, because I, I look at him and I think he comes in as a backup. That's what he, that's really what he was, and now he's our <laughs> yeah. first choice. So, yeah. you know, it is what it is. Uh, Edson Alvarez. Alvarez? <clears throat> can I do that enough? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yeah, you know, when you look at that, he's borderline nine. He's a great player. I mean, a defensive midfielder. And what I like about him, he's got a little bit of bite about him. He's not afraid to put a bit of a, you know, a challenge in, you know, give the player a nibble. You know, the old school stuff, what you want to see. And it's something we haven't seen for a while in the midfield area because we do, we've had a bit of weak art in this there. So, yeah, I'll give him, I'd say I'll give him more of a nine because I, yeah. he's, he's, he's a good linchpin. Actually, I know we've, we always, for some reason, was doing his madness the lot, you know, the, the last couple of games. Mm. But yeah, I like the player. Great yeah. sign. Uh, Kudus. Does what it says on the tin, yeah. you know, and hits on all levels. So 
got to be, you know, got to be brazen. Got to go with a solid ten on that one. But I, I think, think he, major I think for a, a signing, he's been like he. I said this to, I think it was Lucas. Mm. I said if he he gives me Dimitri uh, Payet vibes, not as in style of player, but as in impact. Like when I look at him, when he's on the ball, I always get up at my chair or yeah. if I'm in the pub, I'm standing up, I'm I'm alert to what he's going to do. The same with Pyatt. Like when Pyatt was at West Ham, every time he got the ball, he always thought something was happening. Same with Mo. When Mo gets the ball and he's turning and he's running, I don't worry about him sort of giving away like stupid, like, or, or even when he has a chance, I don't see it being like, like a spoon over the bar. It's always something like that's going to make close, the work. It? It's always close. Yeah. Yeah. So I agree with you. I do think he's, he has been a breath of fresh air. It's yeah. going to be a blow if we do lose him in the future, but I think I think we know we're going to lose him because he's yeah. that good. Do you know it, what I'm saying? It's, it's what point. I mean, hopefully he's going to – it seems like he's staying for next season anyway. Yeah. And, um, but, I mean, look at it yesterday. You, you had three – you realised City realised he was the threat because in the second half, he had three players trying to close him down and mm. he still managed to break through them. And that's what I like about him. You know, like you said, pie vibes. He's got that small centre of gravity, can turn on a sixpence – burst through mm. and um well you, you, we saw it against uh freiburg when he did that amazing run and scored that goal <laughs> it's, it's... you see he was superb mate right well, comes this man man at the moment mr david moyes uh it's goodbye from him he's been with us now what, just over four years four and a half years or whatever it is um Tom, what you're saying about him obviously what he done this this season his time at west ham etc I think this season, you know, uh, it's the one thing he, he you know helped us through uh, for this season was you know the, the Europa uh, again, you know, quite a solid performance. The tactics in the Freiburg game that paid off didn't pay off on the the Leverkusen game, uh, mm -hmm. but I thought, like I said, in the second half, uh, sorry, in the second leg at home, in the first half, we had a chance to. Put, you know, actually caused damage there. We should have got two or three goals at least. Uh, I think even Kudos, Bowen, Antonio, all P rolled the shots at the keeper. But that was where I think Moyes' forte was through, you know, through the three years' tenure, not including the fourth year, is the fact that Europe, mm. it, was his, it was his niche. You know, and it's one of those. But in the Premier League, um, hit and miss. Very hit and I, miss. I agree with this, I do. You know, uh, I, but I will think say, he, sorry, I think he was. I, I think he was just. Do you know what it is with Moyes? It's it's the stubbornness of the geezer. That's the only thing that's I think killed a lot of fans in backing him is because, in certain moments, especially this season, he's been so stubborn in his ways, mm. and he, he just doesn't change. No, and you got to think he's. I think they showed it yesterday. Obviously, eleven hundred and something odd games he's managed now. You know, what I mean? yeah. he, but I think. Are we not? You know, four wheel. We don't hear. We don't hear everything. Was that stubbornness because obviously the hierarchy, and that's his way of like you know them them tune on his ear holes that we want this, we want that, and yeah. it's like well, if you want this and you want that, I need to be supported with this and that to get to that where you want me to be, and if he's not mm. getting that, we both sure you think you 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 know if you're in a job, and you expect this and you're not getting it. You're not always going to put in the best performance. Do you think he was? Do you think he knew this, Tony, in, in the January window? Because he didn't feel like they were giving him the support of a manager that they were looking long term. Like, do you I, know what I'm saying? I think you hit the nail on the head, mate. I really do. I think that, you know, there, the board already made the decision. Hmm. Um, and I think, I think we already spoke about this before. It's, it's the way they, it was the nature they dealt with it. Yeah. The fact right. that they kind of it was meted it out that oh yeah we're looking at this manager that manager and it's like hold on we've still got a fellow in charge here how does it must make him feel the players mm. can see all this and he's got to go you know he's got to rock up at training in the morning times getting out of his car thinking like you know what's the what's everyone thinking at the moment but for me yeah, for me boys it was a good you know when he came back everyone was obviously kind of like okay mm, second term back at the club are we going to get the same as we did before but i think he surprised a lot of people and i wouldn't say that he's 
been legendary. Yeah. But he's definitely, you know, he's, he brought us up a couple of levels and lifted up the character of the club. And we haven't seen that for a long time. I agree. I agree. I really do. I think the time is right for him to go. I've always said that. I think, like, I think the fan base need a change. I think they need to see what the future is going to be beyond David Moyes. I think the stand has been set by David Moyes. And yeah. the only thing I will say, when people sort of knock him, he is a man who has got a sixth, seventh, fourteenth trophy, ninth. This is not like this is the Premier League. This is the best league in the, in the planet, and West Ham are right up there. And, Someone said it to me the other day, funny enough, like 20, I think it's 21 top 10 finishes in their history, which is borderline crazy. Like when you think about West Ham United, yeah, we're, we're not known for, for being that top 10 side, you know what I no, mean? So, no. so I do look at him and I agree with you. Like I think the, the January window sort of summed it up. I think everyone knew what the crack was. I think the way he was treated by the board, I, I agree with you 100%. Disgusting. Mm. Like to, to go out and pinpoint other managers not tell the fans that this is it <laughs> and just basically yeah. like you, you've got managers going to his house in like Faden Boyce or wherever it is and like you know it's just lack of class from the from from the hierarchy at West Ham yeah. United yeah but, um obviously it's his final that's it now there's no more David Moyes how will you remember him time for you his time at West Ham um it's got to be the Europa Conference isn't it yeah winning that that's got to be the best highlight for any West Ham fan. And if you're saying it's not, then yeah, you need to uh, relook at yourself because at the end of the day, and that what an achievement, what a roller coaster ride it was. You know, we was there, even though you might not have gone to the away games or the home games, mm. you was in that that road that ride with all the players, the you know the, the coaching team with Moyes. We all experienced that feeling, that jubilation, seeing that ball play through and that and Bowen putting in the back of it to win, you know, that trophy. That's what you, you remember, you know, and, mm. and that's, you, you'll take that to, in, not exactly to the grave, but when you look at, you know, oh, we actually went to one of the games where the stadium, you know, the, the fireworks, the, the floodlights, the music, the ambient, it, Everything, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those, isn't it? It's, 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 I think, it's, I think if he goes, I think yeah. if he went last season, I think he would have got a hero's goodbye. Definitely, yeah. I think this season he goes out someone who's hated, really. Which I, I do, I do find it fascinating how people hate the geezer. Like <laughs> I do, like because I don't get me wrong, styles can change overnight. Yeah, you know, you, you've only got to get a couple of really good players, and West Ham can change into a completely different side. So hating the geezer, I just don't think is the right call. But obviously, disliking the geezer for the style of play, I understand it because the style of play has been shit. <laughs> it really yeah, has. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that can't be denied. But I think for the time over West Ham, and I always say this, and I always will say this, is he set a standard at West Ham there that has to be matched. Yeah. Like a, a top ten finish for this club, for me, is the minimum. Like I don't think we are. Well, we certainly shouldn't be mid table. Like we're not a Bournemouth, we're not a Wolves. Like we're a big club, right? Yeah. And we need to start acting in that regard. And I think Moyes has done that. I think Moyes has sort of set us up to say, you know what, lads, there you go, right? You've seen what you can do. Now, oh, right, it's your time to go and sort of embrace that and go up to another level. It's going to be interesting. It really is um, in regards to the future. So let's talk about the future. <laughs> yeah. And the future is this. Uh, future under Julian Lopetegui. Um, home. <laughs> yes, happy, not. What are you saying? Undecided would probably be the best thing. You know, we, we saw, you know, his record out in Europe is pretty, you know, pretty good. Mm. But we saw his kind of tenure at Wolves and how that went. Um, he seemed to be making inroads at Wolves. And then before you know it, it was saying, I think something happened there. You know, and he made the excuse there was no money being thrown around. Wolves are saying no, it was just, it was it was him. So I think there's this, a grey area again, as always. We find with with the yeah. boards and, and managers, they don't reveal all, all what's going on. So for me, the jury's out. Um, mm. We've got to see what his style of play is going to be. Uh, we're still wait for him to be announced, obviously as well. That's the other thing. Stranger things have happened, as they say. But. Um, yeah, I think for me, I'm still undecided on this one. 
I mean, I, I would I would like to have seen St- Stardom's choice if it was Amarin. Yeah. Just, just pay the money. Pay the release calls. Mm. If we want to see a different style of football, just open up your, 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 you know, your checkbook and that ain't hard, David. Simple as that. I agree. <laughs> I do. I, I do agree with you on that. I really do. Right. I do look at this situation with Lopetegui that he has been sitting there. Like I've known about this for months. Like literally months that he was he was well in the frame. Yeah, before mm. anyone else. And for me, I think you've got. It's either going to go one or two ways next season, which I'm concerned about. The, obviously, the positive is Steiner goes out, gets the players. They all gel together. West Ham kick into gear, and we we end up being that top ten side that I do believe West Ham should be. Yeah. Or it goes the other way, where we, where we've signed a load of players, they don't all kick into gear, and then we are sort of like a mid table side that is, you know, going not going backwards, but you know, isn't where we want to be, so to no. speak. Now, for me, with Lopetegui, I think I don't see the long term plan here. I see a two year two-year deal that he's been he's been offered that he's accepted first season <clears throat> re transitional season second season attack uh, for Europe um if it don't go right next season tone where does that leave us as a fan base because we are going to question it of what's going on that's the thing isn't it because you, again you're going to see people you know want to whip up chairs and then frust- yeah. fr- you know vent their frustration to the board the problem with winning that situation, if it does go Pete Tom and also they out him, then it comes out to the same old thing. Who are we going to get in now? Yeah. And that's the thing I also look at as well. Who's the next choice? You know, because if they've gone down the cheap route with Lopetegui, because obviously he's a free agent, um, what's the next ace up his sleeve, Sullivan's sleeve? And and that's the, the worrying thing. Um and I agree with your you comment there. You know, if we don't get in the right players and they don't gel, then it's like you said, it's one step forward and two steps back, which then puts us back in a situation again and then divides the fan base even more. And obviously, Sullivan's just sitting there, kind of like thinking, you know, money's still coming in, though, but was, you know, let it crack yeah. on. And that, I agree with you on that. I really do strongly. Like, it, it feels like to me, I want Lopetegui to do well. I really do. Like, I really do. But I do feel like we're in a bit of a no catch-22 situation here. Yeah. Like, on the one hand, he's got a major rebuilding job. If he goes out and spends $150 million up and Steiner goes out and gets these players and they don't all gel up at the same time or there's one that does well and two that don't or whatever, then it's like it's a big season of like transition. Then I look at it and think, well what's the point in that? Do you know what I'm saying? Because you, you, you don't go backwards to go forward. You, if you want to get rid of Moyes, which is the right thing to do, you go in and get a manager that's going to go forward. Um, and then on the other side of it, as I say, if it does kick into gear, then there, it will be very exciting. Mm. Um, what's your, what's your expectations for next year under him? Uh, I think the expectations, you want, you want to see uh, a different style of play. That's for sure. Mm. Um, I know he's he's a bit more kind of defensive minded, so he's a bit similar to Moyes, but at the same point, he also plays a certain style of system by the sounds of it. Um, what I've read on him anyway, so it could offer us a bit more of an attacking option as well, uh, a bit more kind of flair because I think that's something we kind of missed a little bit. Oh, we brought the players in to give that a little bit of flair, but the, the, the Moyes system did in certain way kind of like. Uh, suffocate them. They couldn't express themselves as much. With Lopetegui, I think we're going to see a bit more opportunity for these players to do a lot more. So mm. I think that could be the exciting part of things for me. Mm. Uh, I think he's. I think he's got a, a big challenge though, like a big challenge because I think he's got he's got about six, seven players who, who he can rely on in that team who can come in and do a job. I think the whole defence needs to be restructured. I think West Ham need a centre forward at this club and urgently. Like I mean. Like we're relying on Mikel Antonio, like he's the last result. He should be the backup striker. Like, yeah, yeah. West Ham, West Ham should be having a, a centre forward coming in, who's first choice, and Antonio should be the backup of the bench or someone if he's not fit and available, the main striker. Antonio comes in. 
Yeah. And it just feels like to me that West Ham are like it's it's going to be a scramble this summer, like just, just to get loads of players in. Um, if what position would you be accepting next season from him, Tone? Um, I suppose if you look at it, worst case scenario, um, I'll be looking at you know the worst case is to, is twelfth, right. And the kind of best case scenario, if we finish in that kind of eighth, ninth position, then we've steadied ourselves. Especially as you said, the, the rebuilding program, that's going to be the, the hardest part. Mm-hmm. But on the other end, you never know. He might blow us out of the water. And before you know it, we're in the top six. It's all possible. I agree. I agree. I do think anything lower than 12 is unacceptable. Mm. I, I really do. Like when I look at the teams that are in the Premier League, especially in the bottom half, and let's have it right. You have got Leicester coming up. You got Ipswich coming up. Uh, you're gonna have Leeds or Southampton coming up. So you're gonna have a lot of big clubs coming up. If Leeds yeah. come up, that's a big club. Leicester's uh, like ex Premier League winner, FA yeah. Cup winner. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see. But I do think West Ham need to be aiming for that top ten bracket. Yeah. Like I, I, I think if you go next season and we finish thirteenth. Yeah, like the football's okay, but it's not amazing. Like, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. my attitude is, Tony, if, if West Ham are playing amazing football, they, they don't finish 13th. It's as simple no, as that. It's, it's exactly that. Exactly do you know what I mean? So, I mean, and, and what you said there earlier on is, is the fact of more as a centre benchmark, yeah. where, you know, over the last three years. And this fella's now got to come in and he's now got to either match that or succeed it. Um, so I agree with what we said as well. We've got to get behind the manager. We've got to give yeah. him a su- support, and that's all we can do. We can't do any more than that. Because yeah. yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. I, I'm with you. With Lopetegui, I think we're in no man's land because we're still unsure of what he's actually going to bring to the club. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I really do. Like, I'm, I'm, I am nervous, Tone. I'm not going to lie. I think I'm glad the season's over. I'm glad he's coming in. <laughs> yeah. um, it's going to. I think I'll know more in the summer when you start seeing signings start appearing and start popping up and you start thinking, right, you can see a, a plan in place. Mm. I think with Bowen, Kudus in our side, we're always going to score goals. I yeah. think there's goals in that team. Um, but it's going to be exciting to see how West Ham sort of progress now because obviously the David Moyes era is done and obviously the, the Lopetegui era is going to begin. It's like it, it's like it lasts longer than the Wolves one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. say that. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, agree with Tone, that. Tone, shout out your channel, mate. And any any final words you want to say, mate? No, thank you, mate. Uh, yeah, it's Early Doors Football TV. You can find me obviously here on YouTube, uh, on X, and off Insta as well. Um, got shows coming up during this week. My usual one on the Wednesday, which is the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, final thoughts. Um, yeah, let's get beyond the manager. Let's get beyond this new manager. Let's see what he's going to bring to the table. Let's see what him and Tim can get up to. And uh, I agree, James. Once we see the first two couple of signings, that's when you know where what path we're taking. Yeah. You know, like I, I agree. I agree with you on that. I think the signings need to be very good signings. And also they need to be early signings. I think wait, wait, dragging it out too long just doesn't do any good. And I think last last summer proved it. The old Declan Rice saga just went on and on and on. In the end, it was like... Do you know what I mean? Like nails on a chalkboard, really. Just, wanted, just couldn't wait for it to, to end. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um that's what I that's what I do believe. If we can get them in and get them get a pre-season, obviously they're going to America for pre-season, then I'm all for that because yeah. it gives them a time to interact with with the, the side and also get integrated with the club. I think last season was very bitty. Like you letting could just mm. come in up September the first against Luton, yeah. you got your friend Alvarez in there at in a game, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? He hasn't played a, a game of football in the Premier League, so you know, it is what it is. Uh, Tone, always been a ple- always a pleasure to have you on, mate. No, thanks, really, mate. I really do appreciate it. That's been Tony's uh fan review of this season. It's been an emotional one, it's been a draining one, and I'm well glad it's over. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is what it is. West Ham United stays forever, but that season has been and gone, and I don't want to see it no more. Anyway, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> take care of yourselves, all the best. Take care, everyone.